Going through a divorce can be very devastating and leave one broken, hopeless, and without vision. But God is able to take the broken pieces of your life and restore them into something beautiful. With us today are Bob and Melanie La Victoire, and they're going to share how God did exactly that in their lives. Do you need some fresh hope? Well, then stay with us. Welcome to Lifeline today. So glad you've tuned in to the program. It's going to be a blessing because we've got a great story to share with two people who God did, did amazing work in their lives, restored their lives, yeah. and it's going to give you some hope. So if you know somebody who needs to watch the program, give them a call right now. And of course, we'll be praying for you later in the program as well. The prayer center is open from the very moment the program's open. So uh, welcome to the program, Bob and Melanie. Good, good to be here. Thank good you to be for having have us. you here. Yeah. You're awesome. Uh, your story is awesome. We're going to get into that. But just tell us a little bit about you and your past, Bob. Well, I've come from a background where I had everything going for me. I had a family. I had two children. I had a great job. But there was something missing. And I remember just whispering the prayer, there's got to be something more in life than this. <clears throat> and so I met a fellow at work. And there was just something different about him. And I began talking with him and he talked to me about accepting Christ and so I'd never heard that term before accepting Christ I knew about Jesus I knew about him dying on the cross but I never personally accepted him as my savior and so just in talking with him um, he began to tell me the story of Jesus and then it was the Holy Spirit that got a you know when you go fishing you throw a line and the hook and pulled you in and so the Holy Spirit did that with me. He just grabbed me and pulled me. And I went to him, and I said to him, I want to accept Christ right now. And so I had found the love of my life. I found yeah. what I'd been looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And, How old were uh, you at that time? I was 30. 30. Wow. Yep. And there was something just on the inside of you. You, you knew that it was something you needed. There was a God-shaped vacuum. Your yep. life must have drastically changed because I know that you said you were saved July 4th. 1981 at 12:58 p.m. Wow, that's exactly you remember right. exactly I remember the that time exact you were. Date. That's right. <laughs> I do. Wow, your life changed totally <laughs> at yeah. that time. You know, I was never the you same. know, it's, uh, I like to just say this because you know, when you often tell people that when you receive Christ, something happens. You become a new creation. Mm -hmm. right. But it's wonderful when someone like you can say yes, and I know <laughs> exactly at the moment. I right. never forgot it. It was yeah. a life-changing experience for me. Yeah. And then yeah. some other things began to change, too. Yes, of course, with this new life, um, the uh, woman I was married to at the time, she saw the change in me, and so she began to question. And as best as I could, I tried to explain to her what had happened, and uh, she just could not comprehend it. She just could not get it. She thought I'd flipped out, gone over the deep end. And so uh, a few weeks later, after my decision for Christ, after explaining to her what had happened, she left. She decided to leave. And so that was the beginning of my journey as a single person, which led to divorce. <clears throat> and then I was a, a single parent for seven years. <clears throat> two children, wow. With two children, they were five and seven years old at the time. I just want to bring Melanie in here. Yes. Melanie, you, you had a bit of a different uh, background, lifestyle. You were in the party crowd, mm -hmm. but still uh, really felt a, a hole and an emptiness inside. Just tell us how you received the Lord. At the time, um, I was engaged to a different fella, and um, I knew that I had an empty, empty heart. There was more to life than this. And uh, when I was given that engagement ring, I knew that it was a beautiful ring, but I was never going to be marrying the guy. Mm -hmm. And so um, my sister, who was seasoned in the Lord, she invited me to this play, mm -hmm. Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. And mm -hmm. that night, um, I was faced with eternity. And it was the best decision I ever made in my life, giving my heart <coughs> to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so it was like, uh, almost like... Um, 
she didn't do much witnessing to you before. She just invited you to this. She had, and I. So but it just had, it was a timing thing. It was a timing. It was a timing thing because yeah. uh, most of my my siblings and my mother were all saved, oh, okay. and I was the last one to be real. in. <laughs> I was I was a harder catch. <laughs> you know what strikes me about both of your testimonies, and we're gonna. There's more coming, I know, but but that you both were honest with yourselves in that you knew there was something hmm. missing in your life, spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I think that must be something that God did in both of your hearts, yeah. and, and something that is supernatural, because whether uh, people are really that honest with themselves, I'm not always so sure that they're like, well, whatever, they just put up roadblocks, yeah. but to be that honest, no, there's got to be something more. Yeah. You, know that, you know what it reminds me of? The Bible says that if you seek God, He will be found right. yeah. of you. Yeah. If you seek Him with all your heart, mm -hmm. You know, if people say, well, I asked God once, but if you seek him with all your heart, mm -hmm. you will find him, won't Amen. you? That's right. Yes. And it, it may be different ways. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. coming to Christ mm -hmm. was through a workmate. That's right. Wow. But Bob, uh, <laughs> the story, you know, we always like to say everything, the grass turned green, everything was beautiful. <laughs> yes. You came to the Lord, but it didn't always, uh, things didn't always turn out as good as you hoped, and you were already saying, saying your marriage began to suffer. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you ended up as a single dad. Had That's right. two children, and yes. you were, uh, you know, it was your walk with God was new. It must have been difficult at that time, but uh, how did you cope then, or did you have to make choices? Yeah, it was, it was a very difficult time for me, and uh, I, I remember going down the grocery stores and, and just weeping because uh, I can live on TV dinners, but what does a five-year-old and a seven-year-old need for yeah. nutrients as they <laughs> grow up? So I go down these grocery aisles and just weep. Mm. I gotta find something for them. I wasn't a cook in the house, so now I had to be the cook. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so you learned to cook. I the sure, children survived. I, sure I know that. So. I sure did. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> you had to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing, though. And you know, I have to say, uh, you must be a very special person because for a single dad to take that on. And you've also made a commitment to take them to church, didn't you? I did. Wherever I went, they were with me. Um, yeah. Bill Prankert had meetings on Thursday night, and we'd take them there. Uh, Sundays, they were always with me. But um, getting back to your question, Joan, the difficulty for me was, um, yes, with, with the children as well, but they also suffered as well. They felt the rejection. They felt the abandonment. So Just trying to... Um, kind of nurture them through Trying that to be was both difficult. Mom and dad to them. Yeah. Eh? And, and for myself, I needed something to anchor my life in. It was the Word of God. I love the Word of God and I based my life on the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And so um, there was a place in Scripture where Jesus is talking and he's preaching to the crowd. And uh, the crowd started to leave him because of, this was a hard saying. And he turned to his disciples and he said, Are you going to leave me too? <laughs> yeah. And so Peter, I love Peter. He turned to the Lord and said, Lord, to whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. And that has been an anchor in my life that mm. no matter what I go through, that did it for me. The word yeah. of God is powerful. And to paraphrase that, Peter mm -hmm. said to him, I've got nowhere else to go. That's right. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you're yeah. my only hope right yeah. now. Yeah, and that, that was me. You know, where else am I going to go? You know, yeah. I can choose the path of death or I can choose yeah. life. And I yeah. chose the latter. And so course. you did. You said you studied the word a lot. I did. Yeah. I was in the word continuously. We should wow. mention there was someone in your life, you already mentioned his name, but a good friend of ours who's been on the program many times, Bill Pranker. Yes. And if you know our ministry, you know we've connected <laughs> with Bill for many years. Yeah. But uh, Bill actually, uh, Bill and Gwen had you in your home for a while, in their home. Well, uh, just visiting in Visiting in yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, Bill was very instrumental in my healing, very yeah. instrumental. Our hearts connected because yeah. of mm -hmm. my day Israel with, with Bill and our hearts connected. He got to know my story. And... Um, there's something in Bill that, that just touched his heart. He says, we have to minister to the single people of our community. Mm. And so he invited a guest speaker and uh, had a seminar just for single people, 30 to 40 people. And it was in that seminar that I found freedom. Um, the whole teaching was on um, Colossians 2.10. I am mm. complete in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, I don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. I just need Jesus. And anything else in life is a bonus, is a blessing. And so that was inst very instrumental, and I thank Bill for that. Yeah. You know, uh, he took me under his wing. Right. And wow. uh, he really nurtured and ministered to me, and yeah. uh, I served in his ministry many yeah, years. You were a young man. I so was. this is amazing. And, 
the other thing you, you said is you really started serving in the church. That's right. you, you started working and serving and plugging in different That's areas. Right. The body of Christ, it was a lifeline for me. It uh -huh. took the focus off of me. Yeah. And I saw the people uh, that, you know, people are worse off than you think. And they're yeah. always worse off than what you think. And now, so, you know, we're, we're going to continue in this story. And there's a part here that uh, where the two, both of you, and, mm -hmm. and so I'll just say this, <laughs> yeah, the both of Bob you were, were already, um, you know, I know in your case, Bob, you said, I'm happy to be single That's and right. be a single parent. But God brought the two of you together. And we're yes. going to get into that story in a bit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I want us to take this break right now and share uh, with you a little bit about our upcoming Dominion Conference and also a little bit about partnership yeah. so uh, that we can share with you. And, you know, we do appreciate that. And then also we're going to go to Jill with the prayer segment. Dick and Joan have a passion to see the spiritual climate of Canada changed and to have our nation rise to her prophetic destiny. To get this done, we need your help and generous support. So we ask you to prayerfully consider helping us reach the nation with a monthly partnership of any amount. When you partner with us, we will send you a brand new audio message by Dick DeWert called The Apostolic Call. It's a message that will move you beyond status quo and equip you with a passion for revival and global harvest. With your support, we can continue to reach the nation through television and other media. Thank you for your financial partnership with Lifeline today. For more info, go to dickandjoan.com or call 403-942-0123. You know, Pastor Dick mentioned something in a sermon recently that totally changed my life. He shared a scripture from Numbers 22, verse 3, in the New King James Version. It says that Moab, the enemy of Israel, was sick with dread. The enemy was sick with dread because of Israel, because God was with them. Do you know that our enemy, the devil, is sick with dread because of us, because of you and me, because Jesus is in us? You know, I meditated on that word for several days, and I guarantee I'm walking in greater spiritual authority today, because I know that the enemy is sick with dread. You need to know that. You need to meditate on that. No matter what attack you're facing right now, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Please call us here in the prayer center. Let's stand together in prayer, and together we will overcome. Because the Lord was saying, I'm giving you the keys right now. He can do it today. He can do it here. I believe for it. But God is going to raise up the dead promises that you thought that he had forgotten about. Here are the keys. I believe you're part of that army that shall see this nation come free. Yeah, you want to be at Dominion Conference, it's going to be an awesome time. It's also the grand opening, dedication of our new facility, Joan. Yeah. Uh, we've got a great building. We, <laughs> yeah, just pray for us that we get through it all. You know how the buildings are like, you know. You know, I wanted to say something. That clip that we saw that on the, there about the keys, that yeah. was uh, the previous Dominion Conference. I, when yeah. I heard that in the spirit so clear, here are the keys in that uh, conference. It was a powerful conference, but I knew it related to many things, but to primarily a building. And what is amazing is the miracle that took place after that conference, Joan. All the things that had to change for us to get to the point where we're now just developing and finishing the developing of yeah. a building. And... Uh, this is going to be awesome. It you guys. is going to be awesome. We are going to see some inch, much more uh, and, media ministry. And Dick, we branded our Dominion Conference Hope for the Nation. And yes. I think that is so, so key because our nation of Canada is such a mission field right now. And we really need to see it turn so to I wanna, the Lord. I want to say this because in the past, we've always had such a passion for the nation of yeah. Canada, which is one reason we connected with Bill Prankard. Yeah. <laughs> so much because very similar passion yeah. and uh, what I see today again is that our nation has come to a point in time where the need uh, for a shift in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and you know we often think of doing the natural things you know to change a nation but 
first and foremost, we need to start in the spiritual realm. That's right. And that's why Dominion Conference and conferences like that, that are prophetic of nature, speak into the atmosphere and begin to <laughs> initiate change from the spiritual realm down into the natural realm. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. Even Christian people don't understand that, that that is the way things are done. Yeah. See, even in the scripture, there were 70 some major prophecies about the coming of Christ as, a, as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world. 70 some, these were intentional. They were prophetic directives releasing the plan of God on earth. And so, and once again, we have to uh, see how important this is. So I want to make sure you're there. We're talking to Bob and Melanie who are uh, now going to talk about how Bob and Melanie come together. Yeah, yes. Good story. <laughs> That's the better part of the story, and that's the part of the restoration. Because yeah. even though you were really committed to being a single dad, you had gone to Bible school, you got training, and mm -hmm. you were doing fine, but something happened. Well, after that uh, singles ministry that I went through, God put on my heart to begin a singles ministry and uh, with the okay from my pastor, and uh, 30 to 40 people and ministered to them. Pretty wow. well the same thing that what God had poured into me. And that's when this fine lady came into the picture. <laughs> and uh, at first she was a bit reluctant, but yeah. she finally came in and she was very helpful in the administration, just helping me with the singles ministry. Uh, so it, Melanie, you were single as well, yes. but you said you didn't really, you know, have a heart to join a singles ministry. Why is that at first? Well, just coming to the Lord as a babe in the Lord, you just, the word singles has a, has kind of a, uh, take on going to a singles ministry and I was not interested yeah. in, in meeting any fellas like that, that was okay. way out of my you didn't want to connect with anybody. I didn't want to connect with it I just want to know he, more about the Lord how to be a Christian walk in yeah. in this new life of yeah, mine for so sure. I had friends that were inviting me to the singles ministry and I'm going no, not for me this didn't time. Need that. No, I didn't need that. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, wow. but you <laughs> but did. You did go. <laughs> but you did, in the end, begin I, to serve in that singles ministry. I did. I eventually gave in and went one night, uh -huh. and it was way different than I had thought it would be. And it was, you know, he was teaching God's <laughs> word. What did you think it would be? <laughs> No, I don't know what what I was like a thinking. Dating a dating, a Christian dating service. Yeah. I didn't know, like but it I, wasn't. It was all foreign to me. Yeah, but it wasn't. What was no. it? It was what did you find a really there? Uh, connecting with other people of like like situations. Uh -huh. There was divorced people. There were single yeah. people like myself because I've never been married. Mm -hmm. um, I. You know, just people that had needs and how to connect as a single person in this coupleness yeah. world. You so know, basically making friends. Making friends. And then you you did a lot of study of the word, right? Yes, I went and to various courses just yeah. just to walk out my salvation, just to understand mm -hmm. how to how to do this Christian thing. <laughs> so you were actually assisting or helping doing doing administrative work for Bob, yes, right? Yes. So what yeah. happened there? <laughs> well, <laughs> what happened there? Um, I just had some some feelings that were happening that I just had to to take to the Lord, and also I had I was living uh, renting a room, uh, mm -hmm. my spiritual mom and dad, and uh, very had a very open um, relationship with them. And so mm -hmm. one night I I came to them and I said I, I have some serious discussion to, to to talk to you about, and mm -hmm. I said the single ministry teacher. I said, um, I'm just kind of liking him a little bit more than maybe I ought to. So yeah. um, they just walked me through that because they were trying to prepare me that he was a single father with two children mm -hmm. so that I better, you know, fast and pray mm -hmm. about this one real good because <laughs> yeah. being a single well. person, never having children, y you know, we... We mm -hmm. need to pray for you, Melanie, mm -hmm. if this is God's will for your so life. So you were praying and fasting, but Bob, you were praying and fasting as well. That's right. Right? For God mm -hmm. to and bring... And not knowing that and, each and other were doing that. neither knew that the other were, was correct. praying and fasting. Now, you said one time that you thought, well, I don't want somebody, like, used goods. <laughs> yeah, I just... I just, you, you can't tell the Lord what, what your, your destiny yeah. is. Like God has a, a plan for you. He has a yeah. good plan for right. our lives. And so th if that package comes with children, mm -hmm. then so be it. And I, and I just had to, re I got rebuked from my from my <laughs> spiritual mom she says you cannot that tell the lord that was just a fleeting, thought, just a fleeting thought and yeah. so but there's no one 
<laughs> better than my gift from the Lord. He was that, the best. And Bob, he was were you the starting best. to have feelings in the sense? Well, not at first. Not, I'm really thankful that she wasn't pushy because I meant what I said when I wanted to be single. Uh -huh. and I was okay with being single. Yeah. But it was during that fast that you were talking about, Joan, where I got the answer from the Lord. My question was, is Melanie to be my wife? Yeah. And he answered me with two scriptures. Psalm 84, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. Wow. And I remember this conversation with the Lord, and I said, Lord, I know that scripture. Can you be a little more specific? Yeah. And instantly, just like that, he said, he who has found a wife has found a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. Yeah. And so for me, the word is foundational for me, and that's, that was it. Mm -hmm. I knew she was the one. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And that's how you two began to date and... You eventually the, married. The very first date, we weren't sleeping for a couple of weeks before that. <laughs> so I asked her out on their first date to find out why we weren't sleeping. And so it was because God was doing something in our hearts. Yeah. And so from that very first date, we prayed together as a couple. Yeah. And we mm -hmm. committed our relationship to the Lord. Wow. He has blessed and blessed and blessed. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you were married. That was wonderful. So yes. here's the, the issue, because we said about restoration, this will give you hope. You had two children. You're now a blended family. Yeah. You were single. You were never married. And so the joining together this, I guess in some ways people can look at it like, you know, it's the second plan. The, it's a second best plan. Yeah. But that's not the way it was, is it? That's we not the way it is for that. you. God's a God of second chances. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm thankful for his gift. Yeah. Um, you have bonded with the well, who are grown now, the children that are grown. Today. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was one. I'm not saying it was all easy because not being a mother or a parent, like you, yeah. you have to really trust the Lord of how to mm -hmm. go on with life mm -hmm. uh, as a blended family. Yeah. But thank the Lord that he gave me the grace and, and just the wisdom of how to interact with such, a, and they made it easy for they me. They loved you. They, and I loved them. <laughs> and, you know, not having children of my own, I just, I said, God, this is your will, so I'm going to love them as they're my own. Yeah. And today, our daughter is, she's going to be 45 this year. I call her my daughter because yeah. she's my daughter she's and my daughter. son. And I just love them like they were my own. Mm -hmm. Well, if anybody and, knows you at all, Bob and Mel, and I've known you through Bill Prankard and, you know, off and on, uh, anybody that knows you at all can see that you have a very successful marriage, you know, that mm -hmm. you both are really committed to the Lord, you're committed to ministry. You've been on staff with the ministry in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you've administrated church. You've administrated Bible schools. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, very well trained. Work. You can see how God has really blessed you as your marriage. Absolutely. And Absolutely. has turned it into something blessed. And, you know, I would say almost that it'd be impossible to say this isn't perfect plan A, you know, from God. <laughs> see, I think that's the problem we find is that when we have, especially in marriage, yeah. you know, you see a marriage fail and then your whole life falls apart and you don't know what the future will hold, and it can never be as good as what you thought it would be. Yeah. But God has a perfect plan Always B. Always has another plan. Yes. God is right? sovereign. He has perfect plan. You know, He has perfect plan C. Perfect now, plan B. I'm not suggesting B that we go through them all. Perfect plan C. They're still all perfect, right? Yes. In His eyes, you have eight grandchildren right now, yes. and they oh. call you grandma. They call don't me you? grandma. They are, they they what, are a your what a blessing that is, eh? Yeah. I skipped yeah. the motherhood and went right to grandmahood. <laughs> that's right. And we as grandparents, some might say that was a good plan. We as grandparents say that that's the best. Plan. <laughs> so I want to share something right now with, that's coming up, and it's in Leduc, Alberta. Yeah. Randy Clark, who many, many people know, and if you don't know who he is, Randy Clark was the one who came to the uh, Toronto Airport Church mm -hmm. in January 1994 and had some meetings on a weekend, mm -hmm. and that those meetings burst into the Toronto Blessing that carried on for 10 years. It was the number one tourist attraction, a church revival, number one tourist attraction for a number of years in Toronto, Alberta. You'd go to the airport and there were signs all over, airport, Toronto blessing this way, that way, shuttle, you know. <laughs> and I remember thinking, this is great when revival, you know, is so profound. In Toronto. <laughs> in Toronto. Randy Clark Wonderful. is going to be in Leduc, Alberta at the Gateway Family Church. And uh, Joan and I are going to be there. We're yeah. going to be taping with Randy. And so we want to just share with you this little clip. They taped it in Brazil, so on a, on a smartphone. So you can watch this. 
Hi everybody, my name is Landon Dorsch. I'm the lead pastor of Gateway Family Church in Leduc, Alberta, Canada. And we wanna invite you to come and join us in May, May uh, 12th to 14th uh, at our church, Gateway Family Church, for our School of Revival. We'll be inviting pa uh, Randy Clark to join us. We're here in beautiful Brazil. We're seeing wonderful miracles and he's gonna be leading our School of Revival. Randy, anything yeah, you Yeah, I'm share? looking forward to seeing it. My dear friend, uh, Dr. Tom Jones is gonna be with us and it's going to be on the theme of revival of course i believe that in, in revival there's going to be power there's going to be healing there's going to be impartations there's going to be deliverance and there's going to be activation and we're going to focus on all of those things and and it particularly uh about how, how god has moved in past revivals and what we think he's going to do this time it's going to be a powerful time i want to invite you to come which is going to be a time of equipping and inspiring and uh It'll be, it'll, hope you can come. God bless you. See you in Leduc. <laughs> That's Randy Clark, Dr. Randy Clark with the pastor, Landon Dorsch. This is Gateway Family Church, and you'll need to go to their website, gatewayfamily.ca, I believe it is. You have to register, and registrations are limited, so uh, it'll likely be sold out. So I would probably do that right away and uh, so that you can come to those meetings. Now, again, Joan and I are there. We're going to be very... Uh, involved at least for a portion of it and uh, we will be taping with Randy as well that's something yeah, we're looking forward to so you're so gonna hear those interviews here on this program yeah. uh, following that so yeah. we're really wonderful. looking forward to that of course Leduc Alberta if you don't know where that is that's just outside of Edmonton on yeah. the south mm -hmm. side of Edmonton yeah. so if you're in Calgary Edmonton anywhere in that region you can catch these meetings Easy what to a get there. opportunity be wonderful yeah well Bob and Melanie we've had a wonderful visit with you I, I have to say a very condensed version that's of an amazing right. testimony and uh, you like we said, you're married 30 years now. You have eight grandchildren. I want to ask you, are there any just little nuggets you want to share with us about how to have a good marriage? Sure. It's interesting. I was asked that question just a few weeks ago, just in conversation with someone, um, just telling them we're celebrating 30 years. And, and so this person said, what's the secret to your yeah. marriage? And right away, right out of my mouth, it says, putting Jesus the center of your marriage. That's yeah. good. That's Amen. awesome. And it's Amen. really true. He's not just a prayer at, at dinner time. He's yeah. uh, in our devotion. Yeah. Or Sunday. Prayer time is from travel. He's, in, he's our life. Mm -hmm. So that was a secret. And she was, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, I think I can see other things, and this is probably you, Melanie, that helped do this, is that your acceptance of Bob's kids. Yeah. And uh, in general, the acceptance of each member of the family of each other made a huge <laughs> difference because there's a lot of people come in with rejection and you know what rejected people do they reject other people that's exactly. true and that's exactly. why i can see that god has blessed you and, and this is why it's been such another a thing that we've seen experienced is uh, mel's gift of laughter <laughs> and you have shared this with us before we don't have much time we're just about going out but mel you just have such a, <laughs> a wonderful gift of laughter oh, and it's wow. very contagious Oh, thank you. Yeah. At 3 o'clock in, yeah. in the morning. At 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my. Hey, it's yeah. all good. We yeah. want to pray with you. And, you know, yeah. if you've experienced brokenness in your life, God is sovereign yes, over all he of it. Is. He can bring you through. Lord, I he pray for you today. I pray that you will experience the grace and the power oh, of the Holy you, Spirit. Lord. He's called the helper. Let him come to you now. Mm -hmm. Help you through your situation you, and give you something that's better than anything you've ever had. <laughs> yes. In Jesus' thank name. You, thank you for being on thank the program you today, Bob. Thank you for having Thank you for being with thank us. You. And uh, give us a call if you need the prayer center. Yeah. And remember this, God is good. All the time. And, and all the time. God is good. See you next time. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you. And we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.